Let's play two truths and a lie. One, medical school is much more competitive than when your 55 year old uncle applied back in 1975. Two, my name is Michael and I'm a medical student looking to help with that. And three, you have a 40% chance of getting into medical school. I'll give you a second. If you said three, you're right. You personally do not have a 40% chance of getting into medical school. Today, I'll show you where that number comes from and I'll dispute some of the data that Reddit and Student Doctor Network likes to throw around. Spoiler, your chances are higher than you think. So this is the data where the 40% number comes from and the link to this chart will be in the description box below. And so this is the MCAT and GPAs for all applicants to US medical schools through the AAMC in the last three years. You can see in the last three years, if I zoom in here, 65,649 folks were accepted, 155,160 people applied for a total acceptance rate of about 42.3%. And that's where the 40% number comes from. If we scroll to the left, I'll just show you here that this is all applicants. And like I said, again, this is the acceptees in the first row, the applicants on the second row, and the acceptance rate on the third row. So with every statistic that you see, I do want you to remember one thing that statistics apply to populations, not individuals. And so that number, 42%, applies to that entire group of people, but it doesn't apply to any one person. So you personally don't have a 40% acceptance rate. When looking at any statistic, it's important to consider three things. One, is the quality of the study that this statistic comes from poorly designed? Is it biased? Is it misreported? Two, are the people studied in that study like you in the relevant dimensions. And three, arguably most importantly, don't assume causality from a study. We can't assume that one thing causes another in these studies. In this case, the study or the data is not really biased or misreported. It's pretty representative. And when we're looking at the sample, it's also representative. These are all folks that are applying to medical school. Of course, you do not fall into every bucket. You fall into just one bucket of GPA and MCAT. And so all of the numbers or the combined statistic doesn't apply to you, but the numbers within that bucket probably are more representative of your chances. And from a causality standpoint, just because you apply with a 517 plus doesn't mean that the admissions committee members just rolls a die that is a 81% weighted and that's how you get into medical school or not. So just applying to medical school with those stats doesn't cause you to have an 81% acceptance rate. But let's get a little bit more granular here. So we're gonna look at the students who applied with an MCAT score greater than 517. If you take this column, go all the way down, we'll see that, let me zoom in here for you. 11,831 applicants over the last three years were accepted. 14,543 applied for a total acceptance rate of 81.4%. Now remember that a 517 is a 94th percentile score. That means 18.6% or close to one in five of those students who scored at the top 6% of everyone taking the MCAT didn't get into a single medical school. That shows you that the MCAT alone is not a perfect determinant of acceptance. Let's compare that to students who scored in the 494 to 497 range. And for reference, that's a 28% to a 37% MCAT score. That means these students are scoring anywhere from the 63rd to the 72nd uh, highest scores within everyone who's taking the MCAT. When we look at their scores in this column here, 494 to 497, take it all the way down, we see that 1,103 students were accepted with this MCAT score out of 11,291 for an acceptance rate of 9.8%. That means of these folks who scored in the 28th to 37th percentile, about 10% of them got in, about one in 10, which again shows you that MCAT is not a perfect predictor of who gets in and who doesn't. If your GPA or MCAT told the whole story, then we would see just all the applicants with the highest GPAs and the highest MCATs get in preferentially over students with lower scores. But of course that isn't the case. Clearly though, there is some sort of correlation. As your MCAT gets higher and as your GPA gets higher, you see an overall boost in acceptance rate. This shows us real data for something that we probably intuitively already know. 
that your GPA and MCAT aren't everything. If it were, a medical school with only 100 seats would just rank the top 100 students by GPA and MCAT and accept those students. Clearly, that's not what's happening here. Some students with extremely high metrics are not getting accepted, whereas some students with metrics on the lower end are getting accepted. But while it is holistic, it's very clear that the stronger your academic metrics, the bigger the boost your chances in admissions. You can clearly see it here as we go along the x-axis and MCAT scores increase, we have big jumps in acceptance rate from 45 to 60 to 72 and all the way up to 81.4% for folks who are higher than 517 on the MCAT. And the same trend holds with GPA as well. And again, I wanna reiterate that you don't fall into every bucket here. You only fall into one, and that gives you a more accurate representation of your chances. But as you know, your GPA and MCAT don't tell the full story. Med school admissions is holistic, which is just a fancy word that means that admissions committees consider other things too. And the data does show that as well. And at the end of the day, the admissions process is just about increasing your odds. You won't ever be able to guarantee a 100% acceptance rate, but there are clear ways for you to increase your odds at every point in the application. In next week's video, I'll outline every component of the application and talk about places where you can look to increase your admissions odds. Another thing I want to talk about today is just the sheer amount of applicants who I believe should not be applying. Don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking with a superiority complex, but given the chances that some of these applicants have at acceptance, I just don't think it's a great use of their time and money. Some applicants' chances are so low that it's honestly like rolling the lottery and you don't want to compare your medical school admissions process to rolling the lottery. Let me show you what I mean. So we can start on the extremely clear end, the lower outlier range. And in this range, we have students that applied with less than a 2.0 and an MCAT less than 486. You can see in the last three years, there were zero people accepted with those statistics. About 50 applicants applied with an acceptance rate of 0%. Clearly, these students shouldn't be applying. It's just really difficult to prove to admissions committees that you can handle the rigor of medical school with those academic metrics. And I want to be extremely clear, that's perfectly fine. We get to medical school at our own pace. But a GPA or an MCAT score like that is a great signal for you to consider a special master's program, a post bac retaking the MCAT, just so you can improve those scores and improve those metrics to prove to academic committees that you can handle medical school. And the second time around, you'll have an entire year of experience under your belt. Without having another crack at it, I really don't think that applying to medical school is a great idea. It takes an entire year, thousands of dollars, and months of preparing your essays, preparing for interviews, when you really should be using that time figuring out how to boost your GPA and your MCAT score. We can browse around a little bit more and see other applicants who fall into similar boats. We see some of these applicants who applied with a 2.2 to 2.39, 0% acceptance rate, 0% acceptance rate. Of course, as we go more to the right, they have higher MCAT scores. But still, for example, a 4.7% acceptance rate, or even here, folks who had a 3.2 to 3.39 and a 498 to 501 MCAT had a 15% acceptance rate. I'm not sure it's worth spending an entire year doing all the things I just mentioned for a 15% acceptance rate. Of course, it depends on your own risk tolerance, but the odds are just not in your favor at this point. Remember the opportunity costs associated with applying to medical school and apply when you're ready. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, admissions is holistic, and so these numbers don't tell the full story, but they're good guidelines. If you're comfortable with an about 30% acceptance rate, then apply. If you're more comfortable with a 60% acceptance rate, then wait until then. But I wanna make sure that you don't apply until you feel like you're comfortable doing so. And to be honest, some applicants who are applying with a 1% or even lower acceptance rate or even, or even something like a 4.7 or a 7.1%, I think it would be a good idea to reconsider applying this cycle. You can browse around a bit more and you'll find thousands of applicants who have similar stories. They're just not applying with the greatest odds. And remember, the opportunity cost in applying to medical school is extremely high. It's months and months of preparing your essays and thousands of dollars spent sending back your primaries, sending back your secondaries and flying to interviews. Whether that means 50% of students with similar academic stats get in or 30% or 70%, it depends on when you feel ready to apply. 
But be honest with yourself. Even a 30% acceptance rate will make that application year of your life very, very tumultuous, very, very nerve wracking. And at the end of the day, if you don't get in, it's gonna hurt. And I don't want that for you. If you aren't sure and you want to talk about your application, I'm happy to help. You can find me on Instagram here. And while you're there, shoot me a message. And if you happen to feel like it, please consider following. Some fellow pre-meds have taken upon themselves to edit the data according to what they believe is a decently competitive application. And here's a great post with an even greater title. So here's this post from Reddit of a Redditor changing the data or revising the data to edit out some applicants who probably should not have applied. And in his or her definition, a decently competitive applicant is someone with a 498 plus and a 3.0 plus GPA. And of course, the results will blow your mind. Section A, he removes all the applicants with people who have sub 499 MCAT scores and sub 3.0 GPAs. That means he removed 42,146 applicants over the last three years because they didn't make the cutoff. And exactly 3,000 acceptances were also removed because they didn't make the cutoff. Please note that he cut out 42,000 applicants over three years. That's about 30% each year of applicants who apply to medical school who don't have 498 MGAT or a GPA above 3.0. Now, of course, some of those applicants will be really comfortable with the level of risk they're incurring while applying, but others, I feel, shouldn't be applying. They're not quite ready with those academic metrics, and you can see only 3,000 of those 42,000 actually did get in, and that's a 7% acceptance rate. But when you remove that population of applicants, you get now only 105,000 total applicants. That's uh, subtracted from the total 150,000 applicants, and you get 59,000 accepted students. So students who applied with an MCAT score above 498 and a GP above 3.0 don't have a 40% acceptance rate, but as a group, they have 55.8% acceptance rate. The author has a new acceptance rate of 55.8%. Again, remember this is an average statistic and this one number doesn't apply to you. You fall in a more specific bucket, but still, it's nice to see that in accordance with the author's definition of decently competitive, over half of the students who apply get in. That's a different story that the 40% number tells. But remember, that number doesn't apply to you, that number applies to the entire population of students there. But just saying, just applying with a GPA and MCAT score above 498 and above 3.0 gives you a big boost in your academic odds. And in section B, the Redditor does the exact same thing except has a higher cutoff. In this case, the cutoff is a MCAT score of 502 and above. And again, the GPA of 3.0 stays the same. He cuts off another 16,000 applicants and another 3,500 acceptees, does the math and comes out with a new acceptance rate of 62%. Again, that's representative of people who have an MCAT score above 501 and a GPA greater than 3.0. Just to show you the data on this graph, section B, the Redditor referred to people who had an MCAT score of greater than 501 and a GPA greater than 3.0. So this is the cutoff for the MCAT score, 502 and above. And we also have folks with a GPA of at least 3.0 and above. So this is the floor that goes up. We get these applicants here. And of course, you can see in this little quadrant that I've drawn, the acceptance rates are extremely high. We have 43%, 59, 73, 80, 86, 78, 72, 62, and we can go all the way down. But just having a GPA greater than three and just having an MCAT score greater than 502 really boosts your odds. And if you have higher than that, all power to you. Now I want to be very clear. I'm not trying to shame anyone with a GPA less than a 3.0 or an AMCAT score less than a 502 or a 500. I'm actually on your team. I'm looking to make sure that you're not using a year frustrated with how many times you're swiping your credit card, paying for primaries, secondaries, and interviews, as well as writing months and months of essays just to be very disappointed at the end. I've had many friends, unfortunately, come through the application cycles with no acceptances, and I understand how much that hurts. And so for people in this situation, I just ask that you reconsider applying this year 
or talk to someone like me or someone who understands the admissions process very well to reevaluate your chances so that you can have a great chance every time you do end up applying. Again, you can certainly apply, but I'm worried that your low odds just makes it probably a little bit more wise to apply another year when you're a little bit more ready. Part five, the big question, who should apply and who shouldn't? We now understand if your MCAT or GPA is on the low end, consider not applying. Spend that entire year instead looking into programs like post-baccalaureates or special master's programs or MCAT preparation courses to boost those academic stats. You'll have a much better shot the next time you do apply. I can't emphasize this enough. You really want to apply as few times as possible and only when you feel like you've maximized your odds. Secondly, and just as important, if you don't understand rolling admissions, how to build an appropriate school list, how to evaluate your extracurricular activities and your letters of recommendation, it can be an uphill battle. Of course, all this is complicated and convoluted and took me years to understand. Don't worry if you don't understand it now. In fact, that's why I make these videos. And remember, in my next video, I'll go over the baseline level of knowledge that you need for every part of the admissions process. Here's a conversation on that same Reddit post where a former admissions consultant and a former admissions committee member shares his thoughts on the applications that he's reviewed. This screenshot here may be difficult to read, so I'll make sure to link the entire discussion in the description box below. Regardless, here are the main points. He says that 60% of the applications he reviewed were automatic rejections. That means you've probably spent three to four months applying and revising your application only for an admissions committee member like himself to take three minutes to automatically reject you. And note, this is not because of the applicant's GPR MCAT. The commenter said that it was due to two things. One, not understanding the admissions process, doing things like not listing shadowing as an experience or applying in October when most schools' interview seasons are well underway. Or two, some red flags while applying, including, including writing, writing personal statements or secondaries that were, were a bit too, too candid to the, to the point, point where it was distasteful, distasteful. or berating other career paths. He mentioned that some applicants would say things like, finance was soulless and not challenging, and therefore I wanted to switch into medicine. It's not a great first impression. 60% is an extremely large number, and the Redditor does offer a disclaimer. He says that most of his applicants that he reviewed were international applicants, non-traditional applicants, and applicants who were serial reapplicants. But he also does know that about a quarter of those auto rejects were pre-meds from traditional powerhouse pre-med schools. So this misunderstanding of the application process is more common than you think. Unfortunately, there are plenty of students who apply to medical school without a good base of knowledge. Their only understanding of medical school admissions comes from their second cousin who applied in 2002 and got on the phone call with them for 15 minutes. Even in the era where internet access is far and wide, some students, especially those in lower socioeconomic status, can find themselves in the deep end. They either can't find reputable sources of information or they get lost in Reddit and student doctor network and can't figure out what information is useful and what information is just plain toxic. All right, yeah, that's a breakdown of the true medical school acceptance rate and why you personally don't have a 40% chance of getting in. Even more important, we learned about understanding when to apply and when it might be beneficial to take a year off to strengthen your application. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button down there somewhere and hit the bell notification if you'd like to be notified of all the videos that I come out with. You can also click here to see my video breaking down everything in the medical school application process, including where you can find places to increase your odds at admission. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.